when I had to do how to manifest in a child shadow. For me, even though it wasn't something necessarily I was seeking at the time, I was amazed by the results. And, you know, I feel like it's something you can just keep doing forever, really, no matter what your circumstances are. From To Be Magnetic, this is The Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. And your host, Jessica Gill. As the leading destination for neural manifestation, we dispel the woo-woo in order to help you create real, tangible results based on neuroplasticity, psychology, epigenetics, and energetics. Our goal is to normalize the practice of manifestation and empower you to get into the driver's seat of your life in order to manifest the experiences, relationships, and things that most align with your authenticity. And by pressing play, the process begins. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Expanded. Jessica here. I am so excited the timing in recording this right now because as you guys will probably listen on Friday, Lacey and I will be en route to Vancouver, British Columbia for the next stop on our speaking tour. I cannot wait to connect with you guys in person. It's sort of like our unofficial kickoff to the challenge. Our pre-week for the challenge is launching on Monday, November 6th. And this is kind of the spot that we can set intentions together as a community. We highly encourage anyone who hasn't gotten tickets. I think we have a handful of tickets left for Vancouver and a limited amount left for Los Angeles. Angeles on December 2nd. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet for the speaking tour, be sure to grab them now. Bring your friends, bring your partners, bring your family, bring anyone. Anyone is welcome. You don't have to be a member to attend. It is going to be a really incredible, magical time. And like I mentioned, we are kicking off our big end of year manifestation challenge this coming Monday, November 6th with our pre-week. And we even threw in a little bonus for you. So one of the deep imaginings we added to the challenge this year is a sleep DI. We have been highly requested it. So we curated a batch of Delta wave binaural beats and almost like a yoga nidra style meditation where we relax every part of our body so we can sleep into that deep rest. And before we do that, we have a moment where we kind of reflect on anything that's sort of swirling around in our mind that we're ruminating on that maybe a test and expander, maybe it's just a random thought that's coming in. And can we just release that for a moment so we can go into that deep restful sleep? Sleep is so important when it comes to creating new neural pathways, which is how we move from a place of low self-worth, limiting beliefs, to a place of high self-worth and empowering beliefs. So we decided during the pre-week, we're actually going to launch the Sleep DI early. So you guys can start using it as soon as Monday, start creating a little nighttime ritual for yourself, honor yourself. If you are in the Northern hemisphere, we are moving into winter. The sun goes down earlier, might be chillier where you live. How can we have a more inward curated ritualistic experience, especially with our sleep? Studies have shown that if you have a ritual around sleep, a routine around sleep, good sleep hygiene, it can make the experience a lot better. So if you are someone who suffers from insomnia, or maybe you're just looking to just up your sleep game, have better, deeper sleep, this DI is going to be fantastic. And that will be launching the challenge on Monday. And we have our biggest sale of the year going on right now, where you can join the membership, which gives you full access to not only the challenge, but every single one of our workshops and deep imagining. So be sure to check that out in the show notes as well. Today's episode is with one of our favorite people in this community, Dr. Tara Swart. So Dr. Tara, you've heard in many manifestation episodes with us, she's an incredible neuroscientist and psychologist that has really gone through this work with us and helped us steep it in science and understand what is going on in the brain and why it is so effective. And we had an incredible recording with Tara for her podcast called Reinvent Yourself with Dr. Tara, where she interviewed Lacey and I. We had so many DMs from a few different community members last week who had listened on her podcast. We're like, this is such an incredible episode. Love to hear the three of you guys together. So we're like, let's bring it to the larger community and let everyone listen in. So we're sharing it today on the podcast. And if you already listened through once, 
comments. I'm sure you're going to get new takeaways this time around. It is so inspiring, really speaks to the science behind manifestation and the power and magic of this work. And Dr. Tara will even be doing the manifestation challenge alongside all of us. So be sure to sign up, join the challenge, follow Dr. Tara, check out her podcast. And I think you're really going to love this episode. So enjoy. And now a word from our partners. Did you know that every single time you brush your teeth, you swallow a little bit of your glob of toothpaste and over the course of a week, you're actually swallowing almost an entire blob. There is so many additives and preservatives and things that are not necessary for keeping our teeth clean, but are simply in our toothpaste just to stabilize the water and make it a paste form. And so founder of Bite Toothpaste Bits, a few years back, invented an incredible toothpaste bite that removes the water and thus removes all the additives. So you have all of the stuff you need for pearly white, beautiful, healthy teeth, and none of the stuff you don't. It is one of the cleanest toothpaste on the market. And it even has nanohydroxypate, which is a natural form of fluoride. So it helps support your teeth, restore your enamel and help with sensitivity. They are my absolute go-to and I love that they are so sustainable and compostable. There's no plastic tube to get rid of. Everything is fully recyclable. You can get it on subscription so you could have the little bites with you. They're so easy to travel with so you don't need to leave it in your check bag. You can go through security with it. And we have a code where you can receive 20% off your order. Use the code MAGNETIC, all caps, M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C for 20% off. Again, that's code M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C. And you can check out the show notes to find their website and all the incredible products they have to offer and their beautiful pledge to sustainability and how they are working to help the environment. All right, on to the episode. Hi, Lacey. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you for having us. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> it's so good to connect. <laughs> it's so nice to, to have the dream team back together again. Truly. true. So much has passed since we were really, you know, recording all of the time. It's just, it feels really, yeah, special. Yeah. We've done the odd one since we were doing the monthly ones, but now this really does feel like a reunion. So we are obviously going to get on to manifestation, but I would love for my listeners who don't know you two as well as I do to start off with, Lacey, your personal reinvention story. So basically what you were doing and what you wanted to do and then how you ended up where you are now. Absolutely. So I moved to Los Angeles at like 17 and a half to be an actress and a model like everybody else who comes here. And I come from a long line of, you could call them magic workers, women with gifts. Uh, And I didn't really understand mine until later on. And once I got here because I wanted to have some sort of control over my monetary existence and success, I ended up meeting with one of my mom who's, you know, was all always like a really talented psychic and medium. I also met with one of her psychics and her psychic said, pick up this one book, follow it to a T and you'll manifest everything you want. And in theory, she was actually really correct, but it was one of those books. I won't even name it because it'll lead everybody completely astray, but it was all about teaching manifestation. And I didn't know anything about it then. And Mm -hmm. I really followed it to a T and I became one of those like super closeted manifestation practitioners in a way for myself. And little things would manifest, but it was never the big stuff. And so I was really stuck in those loops like many people are where it's like they're trying to be so positive or they're pretending to be what they want to be or they're trying to stay in a frequency, you know, as the secret and the Hicks books and things like that taught Mm -hmm. us, you know, because I went down the the big rabbit hole. But Mm -hmm. it was somewhere around 25 that I started to notice, in fact, when I stepped into my worth and I no longer settled for the things that I used to settle for, that's actually when my manifestation would come through. So I kind of threw all of that to the wayside and I was really scared to do it because I was, you know, I had all of those superstitions looping in my mind that if I'm leaning into my negative emotions or I'm stepping into my power or whatever, you know, it was actually going to hinder me. But in Mm -hmm. fact, it just kept bringing more things to me. 
So I, I let all of that go. And that was around the same time that I also started to let acting go. And I started to mm-hmm. shift into really watching what I did when that would result into really specific, crazy manifestations. And that's also the time that I started to recognize what my gifts were. Um, and so one of my main one is that I'm claircognizant. It means that I just know things. <laughs> really confusing gift to fine tune. Whereas when people are clairvoyant, they have images, they see images of the future, they have messages that way or clairsentient, they feel. I just know. And so I started to learn how to recognize when I just knew something uh, to really follow that. And then I started to realize, oh, I can read energy when it comes to manifestation specifically. Like if I do this, this will follow. Or if I tell a person to do this, this, and this, like move the energy like this, it will follow. And so it was around 29 and a half, 30 that I really perfected this process of manifestation. And at the time I was a holistic chef and I was chefing for really high-end clients. So like the head of a big studio and an actress, and they would hear me talking about this stuff because I thought I could only do it for myself. And so I would always be like, I manifested this thing and like this partner and this apartment for $300 in the Echo Park Hill. And they were like, oh, hold on, (laughs) tell me, like, show me what you're doing. And I was really transparent. I'm like, well, I don't know if other people can, but this is what I do. And they began to manifest. And it was actually one of my clients who, you know, said, you're a great chef and all, but I actually think that this is your thing. And Mm -hmm. I like kind of would lead friends through it in circles. And it was at that time at Christmas, the holidays, that all of my resources were dried up. All my clients went out of town. Mm. I had no money. I was totally in debt and I had to borrow money from my mom. And I kept sitting in meditation and the universe said, if you don't put out this gift, you will always be broke. Like you're putting out a form of manifestation that doesn't exist yet. And it's going to be really digestible for people and really effective. Mm -hmm. And I come from a really small, you know, cowboy town in California. And I was like, oh, fuck no. (laughs) (laughs) I'm crazy. I absolutely can't do this. But I was broke enough that I went, okay, okay, I'm going to start. And I started with a blog post and Mm -hmm. I just started educating on manifestation. And our process of manifestation was like really revolutionary when it came out in 2015. Obviously, we've had many people like go on to be really inspired by it. But at the time I was, I was doing like one blog post after another teaching people, you don't actually manifest from your thoughts. You manifest from your subconscious, uh, you know, the imprintations you picked up from zero to seven and, you know, really incorporating unbeknownst to me, a lot of psychology and neuroscience, you know, and it was all Mm. being channeled through me. So it was greater than me. And so at that point, at about a year after taking clients, I was booked out for almost two to three years. And it just took off like wildfire because I think people were so uh, refreshed to finally be like, oh, wait, I can I can feel my feelings and actually use those as a blueprint to see what's blocking my manifestation. And it was the first process that was put out there that was like step by step. If you mm-hmm. follow A, B, C, and D, you know, it just wasn't having to feel into a frequency and you meditate Mm. until, you know, you were blue in the face. It was like, oh, okay, if I go one, two, three, four. So that's really how this all launched. And and then it, you know, obviously my process turned into a brand and and Jessica is the second big host and face of the brand who hosts our podcast and knows the work like the back of her hand and is constantly bringing new concepts, ideas, content, and teaching. And that brings us up to today. So... Jessica, how did you get into manifestation? It's interesting. So I come from a film and television production background, worked in TV since, you know, I was in my early 20s, fresh out of college, went to college for film and television production. And I found actually the brand when I was at this chapter of film and television, I was working for a couple different jobs where I was like missing the heart. I was like, I have all these incredible stories around me, people transforming their lives. I felt really called in film and TV to share stories that were inspiring. You know, when you leave a movie and you're like, that just expanded my mind. I feel differently about the world. I see the world differently. I was like, I want to create something that does that. And so that's why I thought the portal was for sure film and television. And 
I, at the same time, was on my own sort of spiritual journey, learning through, you know, self-evolution and my childhood and in therapy. And one of the things I found really challenging in therapy was that I wanted to go deeper. I wanted a space where it was like, what is the exercise I need to do to move past this habit or belief system? I feel so stuck Mm -hmm. in certain patterns that were Mm -hmm. tripping me up. And at the time, it was in relationship around trust issues. And I was like, I know I don't want to have these fears about all these things going on. How do I just release them? Like, what do I need to do? And I found Lacey's Inner Child Workshop. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. It's adding like a little bit of the spirituality, but it's so backed and seeped in like science and psychology. That was the first course I bought. And I remember laying down and I didn't know what was going to happen for hypnosis. I thought I was going to be like squawking like a chicken or something. I don't know. I was like, Daniel, watch me in the room. I don't know what's going to happen, but like just keep an eye on me. So I go down and I was just in full tears, but in the best way and had such a heart opening experience that I was like, there is something really special here. And I listened to other hypnosis meditations and tracks before, but something about, it just felt like this journey you were on that Lacey was guiding you in on these, you know, hypnosis meditations that we now call deep imaginings. And I just had such a powerful experience and I was diligent about the work. And within, I would say, three months, those trigger points around trust issues were maybe 90% better. And then over the course of the year, the things that would bother me, like I couldn't even explain to you, I was such a different person. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was possible. I thought I was hardwired to have these issues. They weren't going to go away. And then with that work, I really overwrote those limiting beliefs into security and safety. Now, I'll also throw the caveat that I had a secure and stable partner that was not being sneaky or lying or giving me purpose to or reason to question him. But that the combination of having a secure partner and then working mm-hmm. through those things totally overwrote them. And I was like, what else can we do down here? You know, what else is there? And it's funny, Lacey, I don't know if I ever told you this, but months before you guys even had an opening to expand into the podcast and all of those, that role, I was getting like, well, what if there was like an exercise or a tool like this? And I, in the middle of the night, I would get these flashes and I was like, this is so creepy. They don't know me. (laughs) What am I going to do? Like, here's all these ideas. That's so strange. Like, what am I going to do with this? So I just kept writing them down and sat on them and sat on them. And I was like, well, you know, if it's meant to be at all line. And when you guys had the position opening, I was like, okay, this is it. And then within the first few months, I was like, well, now I have that list of ideas. Let's see if any of them work. (laughs) And then started working through there. Amazing. Well, that also just shows just the magic of of the universe. And it's so much bigger than a person and and all of these beautiful teachings and tools that are available, Mm -hmm. you know. And of course, we'll have to explain our work with you, Mm -hmm. Dr. Tar, because you came in and you legitimized (laughs) it. Like, you know, and so it just goes to show that however someone is connecting with the tools and the work that they're needing to evolve into their soul's purpose and and the life they're meant to live, there's so much support that's bigger than us at hand that are Mm -hmm. guiding us. Yeah, because I was thinking that, you know, if you hadn't done the work, Jessica, you could have, even though your relationship was safe and secure, you could have sabotaged Mm -hmm. it because of your, your, like, you know, subconscious beliefs. And equally, if you'd been single and then you'd done the work, the chances of you meeting a safe and secure partner would have been much higher. So it's great that you had both the things at the same time. But I think for listeners who maybe say, well, I don't have that right now, it can work either way around. It's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, really. I just want to raise at this point that I I think we still have a a dispute about who manifested who. So my side of the story (laughs) is that when my book was coming out in the US in late 2019, I, of course, wanted to get on to like all the best podcasts that I could. And yours naturally was one of them. And I think my publisher reached out and we just didn't hear back from you. Several months passed. And then I got an email from Jessica saying, we're looking for a neuroscientist to go through our work and back it up with with science and research. And I thought, this is such a strange coincidence. And 
then you said, okay, for a start, let's have you as a guest on our podcast and just get that conversation going. And then we can, you know, talk about what you could do. So I guess onto the podcast, well, apart from the fact that the first question Lacey asks me is, what's your star sign, your rising sign and your moon uh, sign? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> apart from that, you were both like, yay, we manifested you. And I, I thought, mm, I'm not sure about that. I've been manifesting you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so funny because I our press inbox and our inbound inbox now we have a, a submissions portal so it's a little bit more <laughs> organized. It was so overwhelming. So I don't even think we mm. clicked and found your email until after because I remember going through and being like, "Where's that one email from Dr. Tar?" And then that other one popped up, and we're like, "Wait a second, we've already she <laughs> yeah. already reached out. This is so wild. It was such a." kismet time. And at the moment in time, we were like, okay, who is someone that we would be so excited to work with that has incredible credentials that we trust, but also really like fits in with us, you know, where it can, mm. it can, we can talk about so many things. They're into the spirituality aspect of mm. it, which you so are. Every single new piece of information we found out about you, we're like, and this and this, and she's on a farm? <laughs> what? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> In the countries. I remember when you you guys approached me about it and yeah, they were listing off everything and I was like, oh, manifestation, this is yeah. perfect. You know, as the stars align when we end up finding the right people to work with always. Totally. And I because of, of then doing the consulting work on the workshops, I had to do them all myself. So I had to do how to manifest in a child shadow. And I would say the same that for me, even though it wasn't something necessarily I was seeking at the time, I was excited to do it as part of the work and I was amazed by the results. And yeah, I've never experienced a, a hypnosis, what we call the DIs, like like that either. And I just, you know, I mean, I love Lacey's voice, but just the whole feeling of it is is very special. And it's kind of easy to want to keep doing it every day. Whereas with a lot of things, you know, people start with good intentions and then they don't necessarily finish. And later on, when I was going to do like a, the second part of the work, I had to do the love and the money unblocking DIs. And I remember thinking, I don't really feel like I need to do those. I wouldn't choose to do those. But they still had an amazing effect on me. So, you know, I feel like it's something you can just keep doing forever, really, no matter what your circumstances are. I would love to hear for people who maybe don't really know about manifestation and particularly your method, what it is. And also, if you know, in terms of ancient wisdom, where did it come from? You know, I think this has been around forever, like truly forever. Mm. And I think a lot of people will argue, you know, where it stems from. I believe when you look at cultures pre-religion, you know, if we mm. look at everyone had a, a version of living off nature and studying nature. And I think everybody practiced versions of these, right? Because I've been doing a lot of magic work lately. I've been doing magic work my whole life really. But as of late, I've been just studying it a lot. So for people who don't understand that, that's what people will use in paganism or Wicca. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, which I would argue that that has been what every ancient culture <laughs> uses, yeah. Yeah. you know, pre any form of religious revolution or introduction. And so I, I think that people have probably been tapping into this since the very beginning of time. So Lacey, that raises an interesting question in my head, which is that, do you think that manifestation and religion can coexist or are they mutually exclusive? No, I absolutely do. And I really believe that when you look at, there's so many different forms of religion and, you know, there are a couple, or I'll actually, I'll just answer it very easily in my opinion. If you just purely look mm -hmm. at Christ consciousness, right? Look at Christ's journey. Um, if we're looking at Christianity, for instance, just mm -hmm. because it's so widely recognized. If you look at his journey, he was able to heal with nothing but himself. He didn't need hands. Mm. He didn't need tools, material whatsoever. And if you look at these teachings inside of, let's take just the traditional Bible, the Second Testament, I mean, people were, were able to walk on water. Like, it's just, you know, it showed a lot of mysticism and it shows uh, a mm -hmm. lot of, it points to a lot of being able to work with a higher power and an ability mm -hmm. to listen, receive, and 
be able to live out your purpose in your life at your highest good. So I totally believe they can coexist. And in fact, I think we have quite a few people in our community who are practicing a faith of sort, uh, but also yeah. use the science and the neuroscience in this to help facilitate that process to basically manifest the life they came on the, to the planet to have and enjoy. And I'll let Jessica take over in a minute, but the main crux to everything that we teach and believe is when you came onto the planet, you were totally whole, worthy, and perfect. And we mm -hmm. could argue whomever your higher power is created you, right? But because mm -hmm. we all experience in the human experience in the material plane, pain, shame, and programming, essentially the entire crux of our work is just going back and healing that pain chain and programming, taking off the onion layers and able to really be and present from your subconscious space, your totally worthy, authentic self you came onto the planet as. And then beyond that, the mm. second biggest tool is to expand your subconscious, to show it, to see, to believe what it never witnessed in childhood or up until this point of what's possible that you're calling in and mm -hmm. neither of those tools, in my opinion, go against any form of belief of religion. You know, it's, it's really just harnessing who you are and being the most healed version of that in your subconscious and walking forward. What are your thoughts, Jessica? Yeah, so I think that it depends on what your religion is and what your, your term of spirituality. I never have thought about them in conflict before. Because I think you can honor your own religious beliefs and perspective while also manifesting, working with the universe, thinking of your own autonomy and self-actualization and the power mm -hmm. of that in order to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that got me into manifestation was really the idea that you can overwrite these limiting beliefs. And there's so much science in that. So to me, it's like a practice of where science meets a belief system of self-trust, self-efficacy, being able to know that you can transform and bring something forward. And from like the etymology of manifestation, it appears that it first came online around the 15th century. And really what it meant at that time was the action of disclosing what is secret, obscure, unseen. So if we think about manifestation from that lens of revealing the unseen, when you're yeah. manifesting something into reality, you're bringing the possibility of life forward in a tangible form. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the magic of it. That is the the beauty of it. And we're not attributing the power of bringing that thing into form to, you know, a religious God or someone above us who's handing us something. It's saying we're working with the energy and the forces ourselves in order to cultivate this thing that was the way I see it is it's all accessible to everyone at all times. And so, yes, there are limitations on our physical world. You know, there are systematic issues. There, There's just historical issues that are happening. But we do have the possibility, anyone has the possibility of manifesting and bringing that thing forth. Yeah, I, I completely agree with both of you. I think, you know, because equally somebody could say, well, can you really be a scientist and believe in God or belong to a religion? And just because you believe that you can take agency and autonomy over your life in the material world doesn't mean that you can't believe in a higher power and also pray to God. And if I think about the the sort of more mystical arms of some of the major religions like Sufism and Kabbalah mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and actually just, you know, Buddhism itself or Tantric Hinduism, then those elements appeared alongside religions maybe more a long time ago. Now, they may feel a bit more separate, but I think those things, yeah, they've, since religion started, they have coexisted. And as we believe that things like manifestation, and, you know, if you think about shamanic ceremonies where you might take a substance or you might just dance into the night and have this, you know, mind expanding experience, then, you know, that's another example of, of that kind of thing that was already there. Well, you know, it's just, it's so true. And if, yeah, if you look at every culture since the beginning of time, you know, getting back to this namesake and theme of, you know, the podcast this year for you, every single one had a form of ceremony or tools mm -hmm. like, you know, even the Sikhs with 
you know, Kundalini. It's just like every culture has been using some form of this. And I mm-hmm. believe everybody had to in a way to survive. Like they had to watch patterns and they had to uh, assess if they did this, the harvest would happen, <laughs> you know? So I think it has been so fundamental. Uh, and I loved how you highlighted that um, a lot of these, like Kabbalah, and they were so closely related with these religions. So yeah, absolutely. I, mm. I totally agree. Yeah, and I think it's nice to have a method, whether it's scientific or not, but obviously preferably scientific, that is may or may not be to do with your religion, but people from any religion can use it and it can make your life better. I mean, I don't think really if you had to sit down and, and ponder that dilemma yourself that you would say that you couldn't or shouldn't do that thing because you belong to a particular faith. So that's, that's really great, thank you, because I think there might be quite a lot of misconception around that. I don't know about you all, but my sinuses have been going crazy. Maybe there's more pollen in the air or more dust, but for some reason, my nose keeps getting stuffy and running. And whenever I have anything with my sinuses, the first thing I run to is my beekeepers naturals. You know, we are obsessed with them here at To Be Magnetic. They are the company that is reinventing the medicine cabinet by creating clean, effective products powered by the beehive and backed by science. So I will go and grab their nasal spray, which is a completely clean, all natural way to support, clear, and soothe your sinuses when you're having irritation with all of the stuff that you need that helps your body recover without any of the addictive habit forming things that are in other nasal sprays out there on the market. It is packed with propolis, which is the defender of the beehive. Bees use it to line the walls and keep germs out of the hive. And when we take it internally, it is packed with B, C, and D vitamins, zinc, antioxidants, and 300 plus beneficial compounds. So when you get to spray this in your nose, it helps soothe the entire area and keep germs out. And it's also incredible to use before traveling or getting exposed to large groups of people. I heard a long time ago a recommendation that people have always said to put some sort of lubricant in your nose before you're going to go on an airplane or somewhere where you're exposed to a lot of different germs because it helps lubricate the area and can trap the germs. And that's exactly what this propolis nasal spray does, but it has the added benefit of also having vitamins and minerals that are gonna boost your immune at the same time. And their herbal formula also includes Foods, eucalyptus, oregano oil, and xylitol, which will help the flow of mucus and increase nasal volume to help clear your sinus passages. So if you are suffering from allergies, stuffy nose, dust, or you're just going to be exposed to a lot of people and you want to really boost your immune, this is a game changer. You can also check out their throat spray, which I also use to support whenever I fly or travel. I have my nose spray and throat spray in my front pouch and make sure to spray both before getting on the airplane. And my health is in great condition afterwards. It gives me that extra boost. If you wanna check out any of the Beekeepers Natural products, you can go to their site, beekeepersnaturals.com or check the link in show notes and use the code TBM for 25% off your purchase. Again, that is TBM for 25% off. I'd also love to hear from each of you about some of the things that you've personally manifested. And if you have any like amazing stories from your community, then we'd love to hear those too. Oh my gosh, what haven't I manifested? I feel like, you know, I can list off a ton of material things, vacations, trips, jobs, money portals, all of that. Even my relationship, my getting engaged to my partner, Mm. my new puppy, you know, all of these things. And they're fantastic. But the ones that fills my soul are, are the ones that help create a deeper connection to self. So every year when I craft my manifestation list, I leave a little sector of something that I'm trying to cultivate a relationship with myself around. So, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe one year that's deepening self-love. Maybe one year it's deepening self-care. One year it's examining the relationship I have with my body and how to be more Mm -hmm. compassionate and gentle with it. And working through some of those pieces. I mean, I truly feel like before 
this work and before Lacey's work, really understanding self-love felt like this intangible, out there type of wording. I was like, yeah, okay, I love myself, I think. And now from doing this work, I'm like, oh, this is what it looks like to love yourself. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like to put your needs first and not in the way of ignoring others' needs or being disrespectful to others, but to really nurture and care for yourself the way that you would a child or a puppy. Mm -hmm. And I think Mm -hmm. that component of the work has been by far my greatest manifestation is deepening that relationship to self. I mean, I show up to my job better. I show up to my relationship better, to my friendships better. And then the material things happen to come as a byproduct of all of that. Um, But that deep relationship to self has by far been my favorite and best manifestation. I think it's really interesting that you put it in that way, like the way that you would treat your child or your puppy, because what I find myself constantly saying to my corporate clients is that the way that you're, you know, running your life, whether it's how little you sleep or how badly you eat or like how excessively you travel, would you want that for your child? And is it not true that you actually take more care over your children and your pets than you do over yourself? And I think there's a, you know, again, a bit of a misconception that that's a a good thing to do, but you can't do your best for them if you're not also at your best. So I I love that insight. Thank you so much, Jessica. And Lacey, I mean, I guess you're going to say what haven't I manifested too, but let's hear some of them. Well, I mean, I feel like it's always so, you know, so boring to hear how someone, met, but of course, every literally, I I had this recognition two weekends ago. I was I was in my hometown. I have a home up there, and I was at the river, and I went wow, I put this work into the world 10 years ago. Well, actually, I started my blog, which would become this, right? But in two years, it'll be 10 years that these teachings have been into the world. And I sat there and I went, I've literally manifested every single thing that I've I've wanted, every single thing. And I had at this moment mm-hmm. of sitting there and going, wow, everything from here is just a bonus, you know? And so the the way that I'd like to answer that is a lot like what Jessica is saying in this community. And for a new listener who may be interested, we have a wonderful library of testimonies. Like it's it's to the point where we're like having to be really, you know, really only choosing a few because it's too much. It's so overwhelming from how many thousands of people have manifested really powerful big things um, to small things. And so if anybody's curious about that, certainly go check that out on our site. But I think the real bonus to this work, like what Jessica's saying, we always laugh because internally we're like manifestation's just the carrot yeah they follow it and it's the motivator that's actually going to get them to do the thing that they wouldn't otherwise do in self-help yeah. um, but the real byproduct is is that you become more conscious and you become more happy you know what Jessica was saying you become way more fulfilled you're really leading from your true authentic self and all the bullshit like the programming that you thought you had to do in order to be loved or be successful based on what you picked up in childhood from your family, from media, from peers, from community, all of that starts to die off. And then you're like, this is who I am. Oh my God, this is incredible. So the fact that people get to arrive at that place and there's not a day that goes by that even on my personal DMs, somebody doesn't DM me and go, I just need you to know that I manifested A, B, C, and D. And before this, I was at this place. You've literally changed my life. This work has changed my life. But I think collectively, the coolest thing about this work is that we have thousands of people who have participated. I mean, in, you know, in the right now, currently in our members, we have in the 20s of thousands of people that are enrolled mm-hmm. in this and doing this work. And to me, what that lends to is a tipping point, a ripple effect of consciousness that's starting to happen. Because when you're working this deeply mm-hmm. with your inner child and integrating your shadow guess what's going to happen even for like that one person's ripple effect into their family, setting boundaries or or finally advocating for mm-hmm. themselves when they weren't able to before. There's going to be a ripple effect. And the real exciting thing to me about that is the next generation. The next generation 
will hopefully be held by integrated people, by healed inner mm-hmm. children. Obviously, mm-hmm. we only have this community, but it is a ripple effect. And so I would have to say mm-hmm. that for me personally, aside from all of the material plane and my own integration that I've manifested, literally every single thing, that is the thing that is the most exciting to me. Like as an Aquarius who is like trying to save all the dogs on the youth list and and really looking into supporting like the foster care system. And I'm constantly thinking about these, these energies who don't have a voice and they can't advocate for themselves. And I'm like, if there's anything really cool that To Be Magnetic's doing is at least it's creating a ripple effect for shifting literal consciousness of how how we we can lead to and help the next generation. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I think all of us need to get to a sufficient place of safety and security and stability to be able to turn our attention to helping those who aren't in as fortunate a position as us. So that is absolutely a reason to do the work. But I, you know, you've been incredibly humble, Lacey. And I, I just want to say that even hearing the story of I was 17 when I went to L.A., And then at 29, I started my blog. I mean, that's 12 years. It's not like it happened overnight. You you Uh had a period of time where you were grappling with that and understanding it and, and, you know, trying to make it work for you. And although I know like all the incredible things that you've manifested, you've also been very honest that some of them didn't happen on the timeline that you would have preferred. And, you know, you persevered. And I think that's a really important message for people as well, which is that sometimes when you get into manifestation, and you, you really get it. You just want everything to happen like really quickly. And what I've understood, even though I've had a very positive journey with your work as well, is that sometimes it happens in cycles and rhythms. You know, sometimes it's crazy. You wouldn't believe what I'm manifesting and three or four things happen in a short period of time. And then sometimes there's a period of months where it just feels like nothing's really happening. And I've learned to be okay with that too. But I have also learned that when I feel like okay, things are really manifesting at the moment. That's when I ask for, you know, more of the things that I want because it seems to be like timely. I really like that that observation because it's so true, you know, and we really talk about those periods in this work, whether they may be what we call the magic dark or a rut or a rock bottom or the in-between phase, like when you are in a small shell Mm. as a crab and you've done all of this growing and integration and it's so lonely and intense feeling in between until you get into the big shell. And so I'm so glad that you, you talk about those phases because if there's one thing that the universe has certainly made sure on my path is that I've experienced a rock bottom and absolutely every single thing that I was manifesting along the way um, in partnership, fertility, money and abundance and career and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So it was really, really great to bring that up. Thank you. Okay, so you've mentioned um, quite a few terms that you use in your work, which obviously I'm familiar with like ruts and rock bottoms and deep imaginings. And we've specifically all spoken about inner child and shadow work. For people who don't know what that is, Jessica, could you describe to us what the shadow is and what the work is to unblock that? Yeah, so there's a couple different entry points historically around the shadow. But the way that we kind of see and work with the shadow at To Be Magnetic is really understanding all the parts of us that we witnessed either ourselves getting shamed for or we witnessed others getting shamed for that we realize wow, if I am this thing, I am not worthy and I'm not lovable. So I'm going to stuff it down in my shadow. And essentially, we spend a ton of energy trying to hide any evidence that we may be those things. And as human beings, we have the entire human spectrum within us. Lacey says all the time, you know, we have the whole human spectrum within us. So in manifestation, Part of what makes someone magnetic and able to call in the physical things that they want in life is being integrated, meaning they're not spending a lot of time and energy trying to hide something about them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say you learned, you know, your parents were really hard workers and they really valued just dedicated effort again and again. And you may have witnessed them saying, oh, look how lazy that neighborhood kid is or something. So you in your shadow see anything that has to do with rest or relaxation as lazy. And that's a bad thing. And that means you're going to be 
outcast from the group or you'll be rejected by your parents. Like you need their love and support as you're growing up for survival. So that's not really an option for your kid brain to process. So you're like, wow, okay, I won't get love if I'm this thing. I cannot be this thing. So then you grow up and you realize, okay, now I can survive on my own. I don't need my parents. But we never have this moment where we reintegrate our shadow and kind of check the shadow element and see, did I have that right? You know, did my kid brain accurately, you know, I'm thinking of how the brain's processing and storing information. I'm like, did it store it in the right spot? Or Mm -hmm. is rest maybe something I need for my survival, for my mental health? And so if it's in your shadow, you will be defensive over it. You'll overwork and try to prove to yourself that you're not a lazy person because you're so afraid of being that. But the work at To Be Magnetic is to bring up what that part is, to understand where it learned that this was a bad thing, and then to reintegrate it to show yourself it's okay if you are lazy sometimes. It's okay if you need rest. And actually, it could be a great thing for you Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that's how you become more integrated and thus more magnetic. I mean, I will never forget, I was scared of doing the shadow work. So when I got the first bundle, which is how to manifest in a child and shadow work, I think you have to do how to manifest first, but you can do the other two in whichever order you prefer. And I told myself, oh, I'll do inner child next because it's shorter. So then I'll have completed another module. But the real reason was that I was afraid of doing the shadow work. And the like epiphany moment for me was, and of course it's Lacey's voice, is when you're at this big gala, you're getting an award, they call your name and you're walking up to the stage and then suddenly the person says every nasty thing that you hate about yourself to the entire audience. I mean, it's so vivid when you're in the hypnosis and just the realization that I got from that was life-changing. I mean, you never imagine that particular scenario and it's very clever the way that you did it, obviously. Shadow work can take years, if not decades, in therapy. So so I do think this was definitely, like you said um, earlier, Jessica, a different way and a way to go deeper, kind of quicker as well. There are so many people out there settling for unfulfilling relationships or people who are stuck in toxic jobs, living in places and spaces that don't inspire them, and especially people who feel like they'll never be able to afford the things and the life that they truly desire. How do I know that? Because it was me before I discovered that manifestation is actually a totally viable, scientifically proven method of creating the life you want. I'm Lacey, I'm the founder of To Be Magnetic, and if you're not familiar with us, we at TBM offer workshops that teach you how to manifest literally everything, from love, to money, to career, to beyond. Our courses are the most effective manifestation method on the market, and that's because of a secret that I discovered years ago about manifestation, which is you do not manifest from your thoughts. You manifest from your subconscious beliefs. So after decades of client research and input from leading doctors and therapists, we design courses that help you rewire your subconscious mind to align with what you want to manifest. And the best part of all for any skeptic out there, our work is completely scientifically proven to work. Just ask the tens of thousands of members inside our Pathway membership, which gives you unlimited access to all of our workshops, tools, and offerings that you'll use over the course of a year. This includes workshops on inner child, shadow, boundaries, love, money, the infamous ruts, and the horrible rock bottoms, and so much more. And right now we have our big end of year sale going on where you can lock in the absolute lowest prices for the rest of this year. You can even get up to $96 off your membership. So check the link in the show notes and join us during our sale. Okay, now back to the episode. So on that note, obviously, you know, we've talked about the workshops and I love them and your podcast is incredibly popular and successful. And I was lucky to be, you know, the resident neuroscientist on it every month for about a year. And we've done the old one since then. 
And I hear on word on the street is, Lacey, that you're writing a book. And I just wonder what the motivation was behind that, you know, why you've decided to move into a different modality. And if you've started writing, how is it going? Well, you know, I'm very honest. <laughs> So I'm a very <laughs> transparent person that, um, in fact, I, I had no interest in doing a book for ages and ages and ages and kept batting it away primarily because of how much I see so many friends write books and how much effort goes into them mm -hmm. uh, with very little return <laughs> and then how mm -hmm. much you have to push the book and the publicity. And I was like, oh, I like who even has the time for all? Like, I was like, no, thanks. This is not, you know, and I think this is like a really good reflection of this work, right? When we really get into our authentic selves and we have this thing called the authentic code. It's these four pillars that really define the four things that mean the most to you. It's like what you spend the most time mm -hmm. on, your most money on, your mental space. And when I looked at my personal four pillars, there was nothing about a book that I needed to feel validated at all. Like in, in, it wasn't even, you know, of interest to me. However, one agent, Meg, she had approached me and she has been an agent for a few of my friends and, and I felt safe with her. And I said, if we were ever to do one, this is the only person. Person I'd really work with. And so mm -hmm. we kind of sat on that for a bit. And then there was a moment where we put together a proposal. And then as a team, we were like, we don't, at the top of this year, we we're like, we don't even have the bandwidth to do a book because everybody knows I'm not going to sit down and want to really write a book. <laughs> um, you know, like, let's be real here. Uh, I, you know, I have a farm and I have a baby and, you know, it's just like, it, it goes into my authentic code. It, was, it, it wasn't of interest. But then we finally landed on, okay, if we were to put this book out, it would be literally How to Manifest Expanded. So our workshop on that with new teachings, new insight, and literally at your fingertips, you could learn the process of manifestation. Um, and that was really mm -hmm. exciting to me. And But we, we tabled it as a team. We were like, we don't have the bandwidth. And Meg had been shopping it and that's when PRH, you know, as you know, is the number one publisher in the world. There was a particular yeah. editor there, Amy, who was like, I have been saying no to all manifestation books. Like I've been waiting. I do this work. I'm, And, you know, the bestsellers under her belt are just astounding. And so this dream team mm -hmm. started to come together. And then I said, well, you know, I'm going to need co-collaboration universe. I, I don't have the time. I've seen my friends go through this process so many times where they sit down and they have to like the labor of love of writing and putting out this book. Yeah. So I was like, universe, if you, this book is really meant to come into tangibility, you have to send us the best person to collaborate on this writing process where it takes all the pressure off of Jessica, who it would mostly fall on and the rest of the team because we don't have it in us. So if this is really meant to be with people and support people in this new modality, like you said, send us that person, bam, within a week, that person showed up. And so we we're like, okay, let's ah. do this. And so that's really what the book's going to be. And it'll be coming out, I believe, in October of 2025. So it's a, there's a bit of a lead time on books. I didn't realize oh, that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a lead time. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, that's the story and that's the truth. <laughs> Well, that's obviously like a massive scoop for me then, because you've heard it yeah. here first. That's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, you get to hear it <laughs> you heard it here like two years in advance. Yes. Um, that's hilarious. <laughs> yes. Was well, yours so, that kind yeah. of a lead time too? So when I finished writing it, it was September 2018 and it came out in February 2019, but I I don't think I really publicly talked about the fact that I was writing it for the year before that. <laughs> so I guess like what they tell us is you have a year of writing and then edits and then a year yeah. of like putting all the things into it. So yeah, that's why we haven't been yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. it at all. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm hoping that you'll be with PRH in the UK as well, because I'm with them. So that's actually how I knew about it. That is what Jessica said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so between now and the book coming out, is there anything new, anything that you want people to know about, any new workshops, any like different ways of working with the community that's, you know, changed since I was last working with you? Yeah, I think one of the really big highlights that has inspired me the most is the way that we have shifted the deep imaginings, which are our 
bespoke hypnosis process. People have been hearing us speak about hypnosis on here. And if you're unfamiliar, it's not like how Jessica was worried, how she highlighted that she was worried, you know, that you're going <laughs> to squawk like a duck, um, you know, and, and not have control over your being when a certain trigger happens. It's actually just a really deep meditation, but we've actually become mm. really surgical about them, which is super inspiring. So you know, we've been working with our resident therapist who is EMDR trained, she's in somatic training. So we've really brought in these incredibly deep tools and modalities, um, such as EMDR inspired and a lot of somatic exercises to help people just drop in very deeply because sometimes we would still get the odd, nothing's coming up for me. And, you know, we we're like, well, let's, mm -hmm. let's change this and let's fix this. So our new hypnosis process is incredibly effective. And you've gotten to hear in this podcast that, you know, I think one of the fa our favorite taglines that somebody said to us once, and we've had many variations of comments like this, but they were like, oh my God, this is like 10 years of therapy in three months. <laughs> and that's something that's <laughs> yeah. really exciting to me as somebody who's obsessed with results that I think we fine tuned our deep imaginings to be really, really, really extremely supportive, targeted and effective. So that's one aspect that's really exciting. And then we've really kind of shaped the company to have these two focal focal points because it's a subscription model and it's a year that people are contributing to this work. I think it takes that long to really integrate and shift. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you're manifesting along the way, but to like really see yourself in a whole different light. Um, so basically mm -hmm. what we've incorporated is a mid-year challenge and an end of year challenge. And this, oh, we just yeah. wrapped up the... Yeah, the mid-year challenge this year that was so unbelievably effective. Jessica, you know, crafted this incredible challenge and we filmed it and recorded new deep imaginings for it. And the feedback is bonkers. Like after last year's end of year challenge, it's our big manifestation challenge. 98% of people who participated in it manifested within six months. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's mind blowing. 98.3. Yeah. 98.3. <laughs> that, so that is incredible. These are, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. And so these are two focal points of somebody's just tuning in, like hop on one of these with us. We're about to start mm -hmm. the end of year manifestation challenge. We're launching it at the end of October, if I'm correct, Jessica. Yeah, it'll it'll be a pre-week, the last week of October, and then officially kicking off the first week in November. Yeah. Okay. And we've really just pared down what we're putting out there to support these focal points. And that's where we're putting new content. And we also are, I think it's mostly sold out at this moment, but we are on a speaking tour this autumn. So we'll be going to New York here in October, I mean, in um, September and November, we'll be in British Columbia and Vancouver and then LA in December, but kind of playing into, are we going to keep doing some tours until the book comes out? Yeah. I think the the interesting part of this work, and that was something I was thinking of in the beginning too, is that it's really all self-facilitated. So you fit in how much time you have to dedicate to the work and the practice is there. And um, the goal with the challenge and why I think they've been so effective is because you can schedule your own timing, like in our app, you can have a little reminder pop up when you want to jump in and do a little exercise or a DI. But with the challenge, we give you, you know, it's about 30 minutes a day, you know, Monday through Friday, or you can do it all on the weekend if you want to catch up. But you're going through it with the community. And I think there's something about the power of community who's going through this stuff at the same time. So mm -hmm. imagine if you're going, you know, one of the weeks in our most recent recent challenge, it was called the Magnetic Self Challenge, was on shadow. We did a little tasting of it. Imagine if you're going through shadow work and now you have this whole community of people that maybe have the same shadow as you. And now you get to talk to them about, oh my gosh, I had the same one. It's such a healing process to know that you're mm -hmm. not alone navigating this hard stuff. And you get to hear of people who are manifesting incredible things, having revelations, sharing mm -hmm. their soul for the first time in a really safe, supportive community. And I think that's what gives that that extra emphasis, that extra sauce, that extra power. I know I'm so excited to do the challenge alongside everyone as we're going along. I'll kind of share on my stories, guys, this came up today and this is what I've tested in because it just feels like you're 
you're hanging with friends and then sharing all these incredible revelations that are coming up as you go through week over week. Actually, I have something to tell you on that second point. I want to come back to the first point as well, but I think I told you that when I was in LA, the woman in the clothing store, when she said, would you like me to hang those in the changing room, said, your name's Tara, right? And I'd just been in there for like five minutes with my friend and I thought she already talked to her and told this woman what my name is. So I said, yes. And she said, yeah, I recognize your voice from the TV Magnetic podcast. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, and then, um, <laughs> so cool. And then last, a couple of weeks ago, I went with a couple of friends to Punch Drunk, you know, the immersive theater experience. <laughs> and we were just waiting to be let in in our group. And this guy came up to me and said, are you Dr. Tara? And I was so taken aback because I was, you know, it was the weekend. I was with my friends, a bit nervous about this, you know, immersive theater thing. And I said, yes. And he said, oh, I listen to, to Be Magnetic all the time. I just love them and you. So there's definitely a feeling of community and it's quite global as well. But I just wanted to come back to the somatic work because I have been saying pretty much since the beginning of the pandemic, but in a way more so since we've kind of come out of it, that people are so much in crisis, you know, that people are more lost and lonely and disconnected than ever. And what I noticed in parallel with that is that that really famous old book, The Body Keeps the Score, is now appearing in the top 10 books again. And I think people either are realizing or they don't realize, but it's happening, is that we're holding a lot of trauma in our bodies. So I agree with you. It's not a scary hypnosis. Like I would wear these headphones and an eye mask and lie down. It's just very relaxing. But to hear that you've put that together with the somatic work, I think is incredibly powerful. So yeah, I, I would love to try the updated DIs myself with that modality included, because I've certainly become more aware that some things are showing up in my body that aren't necessarily I'm not conscious of. So that's really interesting. Like, well done, girls. It's such, it's such amazing work. Now, if people want to follow you, find out more about the work, do the work, where are the best places for them to go? I always say start with the podcast. It's a totally free resource. And we have an episode called Manifestation 101 that we can link to this. And you'll just, you'll understand the process so easily. And then one of the really key components of this process is called expanding. It's like I mentioned earlier, it's showing your subconscious mind that what you want is possible because you literally don't have space for your manifestation to come through if it's never seen to believe that that's possible, especially Especially in childhood. So say you're manifesting this big career thing, but growing up, you were totally surrounded by lack. Like it, your subconscious is like, mm -hmm, what? <laughs> like, no. Of course, your conscious yeah. mind is seen, but not your subconscious. Therefore, we have a step called expanding. And that's where you go through and you find people that you identify with that have or are successful in uh, something that you desire. And that way, your subconscious mm -hmm. can have this big aha moment. Oh, if they can have it, I can too. So I always direct people to that testimony page that I was talking about because we have it categorized as mm -hmm. money, love, travel, career. I mean, whatever you're manifesting and you just read a few of those and you're already starting the process for free of expanding and seeing to believe. Mm -hmm. And then after that point, if you're like, oh, I am ready to jump in and try this work, we have a free exercise that we can link here, the clarity exercise and or we have the pathway. Mm -hmm. And the pathway is our membership mm -hmm. that includes all all of our work and it just really gets you started and on the journey of manifestation. So if there's anything you want to add, Jessica, but that's that's the journey I would take as a new person. I think the other maybe touch point that could be interesting is the To Be Magnetic Instagram page. A lot of free content on there, a lot of insights on there. We share what our podcast themes are about. Some of our podcast episodes cover members' testimonials, which is my favorite thing to record because I get to bring the passion I had for film and television, which was sharing stories that impacted people. And then I, here I am on this podcast getting to like dive in and share these people's incredible life stories of healing and manifestation and trials and tribulations and rock bottoms and all the beautiful things that came out on the other side. So definitely check that out as well. And then just yeah. wait patiently for the book. Yeah, <laughs> very patiently. <laughs> very patiently. <laughs> but it'll probably be worth it once it It'll arrives. be worth it. It'll definitely be worth it. It'll definitely be worth yeah. it. It's been <laughs> worth the wait to get to speak to you two again just today. So um, thank you so Aww. much for coming on yeah. my podcast. And 
I can't wait to see you both again when I'm next West Coast. And I am going to join the End of Year Challenge. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we'll send that to you. You have to do it. It's so lovely to get to connect with you. I know, you too. I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as we did. And if you're starting to get a feel for this to be magnetic manifestation process, but aren't completely sold yet, let me point you to some of our free offerings. You can check out the expanded podcast episode called How to Manifest Anything You Desire, where Lacey, the founder, and I break down exactly what this process is all about. You can check out The Motivation, which is our testimonial library with thousands of testimonials of people who have manifested wild things using this process. Or you could check out our free quiz to find out what manifestation phase you were in, the rut, the rock bottom, the next level, or the magic dark, and how you can navigate. Enjoy. We'll see you next week. 